Penguin on Time the Video Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. Sorry it's been a little while. A little while for Endurance and certainly quite a long time for Kerbal Rising. And Cape's episode came out since he's back from Ireland now and a lot of you have been like, Beanie, where's yours? Well, you know, it's been quite an important chapter in my life recently, but we'll get more onto that in a little bit. First of all, I'll tell you what we're doing today. So, as you all know, we launched a interplanetary mission to Demise, the remnant of Eve, which has now lost its atmosphere and much of its purple vigour. That mission has actually run out of fuel, so we need to send a resupply mission and probably another lander, maybe a rover, uh, in future when the next transfer window opens up. We've got more than enough life support on that spacecraft, and they've got loads of research to do, so we're getting loads of science from that anyway, so that's not a big problem. But... Before we have a transfer window for Demise, we have a transfer window to the Wasteland, which is now what has become of Kerbin, the original home of Kerbal Kind, unless you follow the before Kerbal um, law, which means that Eve was the original. We, we don't follow that. Just ignore it. Ignore it. Okay. A lot of you probably have no idea what I'm going on about, but Games Link's the developer of After Kerbin created before Kerbin, and in that, Eve is actually the origin of Kerbal Kind, but... I mean, nah. <laughs> I'm changing this law for my own devices. Anyway, so what you're seeing here is actually a new super heavy lift vehicle that I've developed. The first stage, as you can see here, we're now trying to reuse, is actually five meters wide because at the end of the last episode, I didn't actually put it in the episode, but we got a ridiculous amount of funds from our demise landing and I went and blew all of them <laughs> on buying parts that we've been researching because we've had loads and loads of science because of all our research labs that we had up around the moons of solitude and everything but we haven't had anywhere near enough funds to actually purchase the parts that we've been researching so I went back and I spent 4 million funds on buying all the parts that we've uh, bypassed over the past 30 episodes. So now we're actually up to date on technology. You know, our funds have actually caught up to our research. Uh, by the way, the second stage here, this 3.75 meter wide stage, had all the gear on it ready for re-entry and reuse, but it turns out I forgot to put a probe core on it. Uh, it even has antennas on it, but I just put the probe core on, as it turns out, the third stage, uh, which we're currently using to circularize our orbit. This 150 ton payload, which is just full of liquid fuel, because, yeah, as you know, the Demise mission ran out of fuel. So this time we are, well, first of all, I did the Delta V calculations correctly, and as you can see at the top, I finally bit the bullet and just got Kerbal Engineer. You guys have been just telling me for ages, Beardy, just... Get Kerbal Engineer, goddammit, and yes, it does help a lot. And it means I don't have to continuously check the map view. And a lot of you are just sitting there with your arms crossed like, I told you so, Beardy, but I don't know. I think I confused a lot of elements of Kerbal Engineer with Mech Jeb. It really doesn't play the game for you, does it? It just gives you a lot of helpful information. Um, you can turn off certain elements of it if you think it's making things too easy. So yeah, I really should have just used Kerbal Engineer this entire time. Again, I know a lot of you are sitting there just probably kind of furious with me but anyway whatever we're using it now so now before I launch a spacecraft I know exactly how much Delta V it has well I say exactly pretty good estimate of how much Delta V it has uh, so yeah this mission is not going to run out of fuel and as you can see here the propulsion module which is uh, kind of most of the components of the spacecraft are just adapted from the demise spacecraft um, but the propulsion module has got twice the number of engines because of course with that massive 150 ton fuel module uh, which does actually use asparagus staging by the way but you know you'll see that in the next episode when we actually go to the waste land um yeah we have a twice that the spacecraft is twice as heavy so we need twice the number of engines so that we can accelerate i believe at about uh, a tenth of a g because any less than that and the burn times are just excruciating so yeah not the most efficient way of doing things but hey you know you can't go wrong with having what is it yeah eight nuclear engines <laughs> on a spacecraft right yeah i don't see that going badly anyway uh, in any way shape or form anyway so i just said anyway about five times in 10 seconds. <laughs> Moving on. So, as I said, quite a few things have been happening in my right there in my life recently. Freudian slips. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, so, a lot of you have been wondering, if you're not in my Discord, you won't know, uh, but how did my A-level results go? Because I mentioned them in the last episode, uh, and then I haven't actually made a video since. I've been uploading pre-recorded stuff for ages, huge backlogs of Sins of the Prophets and Hearts of Iron 4, but I uh, haven't actually made anything since. 
The answer, really, really, really well. Uh, for those of you who don't live in England, by the way, if you're wondering, I accidentally rendezvoused with, uh, with the third stage here because it still had the probe core on it and we had to then uh, rendezvous with the correct spacecraft because uh, the names were the same. Anyway, so for those of you who don't live in England, A-levels are the things you do when you're 16 to 18. You can do them uh, at sick form uh, in a school or sick form college, or you can go do an equivalent qualification like a B-Tech or something, but it's what you use to get into university. Most people do three subjects. Uh, I did four because I'm a dork. Um, but the majority of people do three and most uni offers are based off of three and I applied for aerospace engineering at the University of Southampton Which needed uh, an A star and two A's with the A star in maths or physics um, And I got an A star and three A's so pretty freaking awesome I know it's been two weeks since results day now But uh, the reason I haven't really been making much is because I've just been so goddamn busy uh, With getting everything ready for uni uh, and a lot of you might actually be wondering Biddy You know, how's uni going to affect videos and stuff? The <laughs> true answer is I don't know I have no idea how it's going to affect video production because it is a very very involved course. There are a lot of contact hours, especially in the first two years, a lot of lectures. Um, they actually, they don't allow people on the course to be taking part-time jobs or um, doing anything that uses a huge amount of your time while you're actually studying because it is such um, an intense course. It's, it's well, the full, full course title, uh, for those of you who want to know, is uh, Aeronautics and Astronautics with Spacecraft Engineering. It's a Master of Engineering course, uh, four years long. Um, and then the fourth year is specialised, and I chose to specialise, although I can change my mind later, but why would I? I chose to specialise in spacecraft engineering, so I'm literally becoming a rocket scientist. All, all these KSP videos and stuff, it's not just a fun little side thing, this is my passion. Um, yeah, I've, <laughs> um, I don't know if I've already spoken about this in videos before, but I've been obsessed with spacecraft, space travel, um, and all things just to do with technology and everything uh, since I was six years old. Um, I've just absolutely been fascinated with aircraft and technology and everything. Um, and I've pretty much wanted to be a rocket scientist since I was six. And you know when you're growing up and people are like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you're like, I want to be a rocket scientist. And they sort of smile at you in that condescending manner that you don't really pick up on when you're young. And they go, oh, sure, Oliver. And you know, best of luck with that. And they smile and they, you know, they think, okay, he's going to end up as like an accountant and <laughs> just be fundamentally unhappy with his life. I think they probably don't actually think that, but you know, when you say you want to be a rocket scientist or you want to be an astronaut or anything like that, people like they smile and they nod, but they don't actually think you're just you're going to grow up to go and do it. Well, I am. <laughs> so, so screw you, imaginary people in my past that definitely didn't think about this <laughs> this much. Um, but yes, yeah, so I do actually have someone uh, on my Discord as well who owes me a pint because because uh, I mentioned in a Q&A that I wanted to study at Southampton he was like oh I'm studying at Southampton I'll buy you a pint if you get here maybe not considering that I might actually get into Southampton so now haha <laughs> free alcohol I'm already getting prepped for freshers week I I'm actually um I'm really 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 excited because previously I have actually got my best mate coming to uh, study on the course with me um, which is uh, another story in itself actually but um, <laughs> Like, up until now, I've always had that, that one mate, right, who's had the same interests as me, who I can, ra like, ramble about SpaceX milestones and stuff with and get excited about. You know, all my other friends, they're like, oh, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. And then internally, they're like, you're such a dork. Why does this stuff interest you? But now I'm going to be on a course with a 100 other people who are all interested in exactly the same thing. And... I don't know, that's just really, really awesome to me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Just being stuffed in a room with a bunch of people who are all probably as socially incapable as me. I think you have to be to, <laughs> to get onto this course. It's a course requirement. Next to the grade requirements, it's emotional requirements, socially incapable. Um, but, you know, just a bunch of people who all have the same interests as me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And the whole uni lifestyle and everything, all the societies, I'm sure quite a few of you um, know that I do a lot of music. I do musicals. Uh, I play two instruments, saxophone and violin, sing and stuff as well. You know, join all the different musical societies. I think Southampton has like the second largest students' union in the country, second to Bristol. Um, 
So yeah, I think I have like five acapella groups or something insane. So yeah, anyway, it's going to be freaking awesome. And about that mate that I was talking about who's coming to study on the course with me, Southampton wasn't his first choice, which shows you just how intelligent some of my friends are. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends um, applied to Imperial, quite a few of them got in. Um, but this is this mate, his grade requirements for Imperial were two A stars and two A's, but the two A stars had to be maths and physics. Now he got two A stars and two A's, but his two A stars were in physics and biology, and then he got an A in maths and then an A in chemistry. Um, so they didn't let him in. You know, which just shows just how, how competitive getting into a place like Imperial is. Um, but then I, I learned on the results day he was going to be coming to Southampton with me. And I jumped up in the air and was like, yes! And then froze and realized everyone was looking at me with like horrified expressions on their faces. Because, of course, he was really like downbeat. He was really quite upset he didn't get into his first choice. Uh, I have since convinced him that he's actually going to have a great time at Southampton. Um, and he's certainly warmed to it now. Um, yeah, I, I can be a bit insensitive at times. I was just really excited because he's my best mate and we're going to study together and it's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so let's get back onto the, the actual mission at hand. I've just spent the whole episode really talking about um, the future of me, really. But hey, you know, all we've been doing all the episode is building an interplanetary spacecraft. So yeah, a bit of a short episode today, but uh, I wanted to save the actual launch of the spacecraft and everything for the next episode. And we don't actually do anything in between building it and launching it because the launch window is actually really close. I decided to send a manned mission 10 days before the launch window. So uh, yeah, realistically, this spacecraft would never get created, but uh, I haven't actually named it yet. Which is a point I do want to mention. I wanted to mention this last episode, actually. But I need a name uh, for the interplanetary spacecraft. So, as you can see there, we have the lander, which also needs a name as well. The lander looks decidedly sexier than the device lander. Because, of course, the wasteland has an atmosphere. So... When you have to make something aerodynamic, it just ends up looking much, much more attractive. But uh, we're just bringing it into dock with the main spacecraft here. We actually launched the crew uh, on board the main habitation module, which uh, I think has a little bit more life support than the demise mission. I just wanted, didn't want to take any chances. This mission has got way too much delta V, like way too much. It had more than enough delta V just by calculating it based off just its, its dry mass. Uh, and wet mass, of course, but uh, that didn't take into account um, getting getting rid of the external tanks and that main fuel module um, as we burn through it, because of course the fuel tanks in the engine block are going to burn last. What we're going to do is burn through the tanks around the sides of that fuel module in an asparagus uh, sort of setup, so decoupling two tanks at a time, and then once we've drained that main central tank, which will take quite a long time we're just going to undock that central tank and just remove it from the spacecraft because it's just dead weight at that point uh, I, I, quite a few people don't like the expendable nature of uh, that one module of the spacecraft but it gives us a huge boost just the coupling parts of the spacecraft gives us another kilometer per second of delta v without actually adding any extra fuel but that is the end of the episode everyone thank you very much for watching i do hope you're looking forward to the next episode when we'll be heading off to the wasteland please leave names for the main spacecraft and the lander in the comments below maybe some kind of homecoming theme you know because we're of course going back to kerbin anyway i've been the billy penguin thank you very much for watching and i will see you all next time